All right, so we're back. It is day three. We are going to try to hopefully get the outside system installed. The shingles are a little icy, so hopefully the sun comes out and dries those off. Good news is it warmed up. It's about 15 degrees, uh, so I'm feeling much better than yesterday's 18 or 20 below. I was thinking last night, hey, this RN2 is overpowered. I don't need six Pascals in my weakest test hole. So I ended up swapping it out for the RN1, which would be the equivalent of the Radonaway RP140 or the Festa Spirit. So we're gonna run with this fan. The, R, the RN2 was pulling 42 watts and it's about a dollar a watt at 11 cents a kilowatt. So it would cost about $42 a year just in power to power the, the RN2. Um, we swapped to the RN1 and we're now at 15 watts. Uh, and we've got 3.7 pascals in our weakest test hole. So we still have enough room in our system. Uh, we still got to run the pipe, so we're going to get a little bit more friction loss. But I think this fan is going to be the right choice for us. So without further ado, let's get started. So what I've done so far is I went up uh, out of the frame here and I drilled the pilot hole and uh, felt around and I am going to be able to get this pipe up through there. So I also mocked up this to where I can get that to fit on there. And uh, all, remember all this stuff is just uh, friction fit together. So I got to take an inch off so that this fan slides over an inch, which will allow me room to mount uh, with these two hole straps because I got to kick it that way a little bit. So I'm going to pull this fan off and we'll cut the pipe and then we'll start gluing stuff together. And there you can see the 15.1 watts. So my fitting is an inch and a half that's going to go on there. So it was all the way on. Now I want to take an inch off of that. So I've just got to take an inch off of this. Then we'll deburr this. I also put some great stuff in here and I'm gonna wait for that to set up before I, uh, I'm gonna put some Vulcum on this. If you do it now, this is gonna keep expanding and bubble through the Vulcum. So this is our clear primer. We hit the fitting twice and the pipe once and then do it in reverse order this time. Fitting twice, or sorry, the pipe twice, the fitting once. So I could take and spin this back, but the electrician's gonna have to get in here to wire that. All right, then we'll just make sure this is plumb. And then I've got my four inch fern co. So I want this foam to come out just enough to give me some backer for my vulcan when I put that around. So just kind of keep pushing it in a little bit as it expands out. If it gets away from me, you can acetona, which it always seems to. So I'll glue this coupler on as we go straight up. I like to save my nice clean pieces of pipe for outside, just because they're the visible parts. And then since it's so cold out, I'll have to hold this a while anyway. I didn't want to push apart until it's set up. We're going to go in two inch screws. We're going to use some quad. I'm going to 
that I'm not gonna get my drill in there, so I will mark it and we'll do the same down here. Get a little side to pipe out of it. I just got a little quad on my end of my two inch screws here. Look at that little piece of pipe that I just cut as a shim. All right, that is solid. All right, so now I'm going to use my plumb bob. I already drilled the pilot hole earlier today and made sure that this didn't work. So I've got my five inch disc that's just from a hole saw. So I got that little hole in the dead center. I'm gonna set that on there and then I got my plumb bob laser. So I'm gonna center that on the hole of this disc and then center this on my fitting up here. That'll keep anything from falling in there. All right, so I've got my pilot hole drilled. I've got a little piece of wire that I bent at two and a quarter inches. So I'm gonna put this up in the hole and then spin it around and make sure I don't hit any wood. Um, if I do, I'm gonna have to adjust out it's so close, I'm just tickling it. I'm going to drill a hole straight through, so I got my long pilot bit that's about a foot long or so. Maybe 18 inches. And then I've got my plumb bob so I can kind of see where I'm at here and drill straight. I'm going to keep the debris from falling in there when I cut the hole up. Okay, so I've removed my center pilot bit. That's a quarter inch long pilot bit I got there. And I want to try to use that pilot bit to cut my four and five eighths inch hole. And I want to keep it up in those shingles to the roof deck if I can too, so that it uh, doesn't wander on me. All right, I'm ready to go up on the roof and cut the hole through. So, These shingles are glare ice. So I came up here first thing this morning and kind of made a set of stairs. I used to do ice dams, ice dam removal, and this seems to work pretty good. And then I've got the pitch hoppers here. These do not work at all on ice, um, but I just kind of got them to build my platform up to where my hole is. So there's our pilot hole right there. So, now I'm gonna take my five inch spider bit and drill this pilot hole out. Remember, I got a, a rafter right here, so I'm not gonna plunge all the way down. I'll probably finish the hole with this. Let me see, these are pure ice. So, hopefully I don't go sliding like that. All right, we're gonna go to plan B. Okay, now I'm gonna pull this back and it clicks in place. Just to the point where that rafter starts. I'm gonna stop with this and switch to this. Now I'm gonna go down and get the rest of my materials, but I can also take my measurement. I gotta be a foot above the roof here. So I gotta to go to there for a comp to comp for my fitting. So I wanna be three foot eight for my pipe. All right, so I got my pipe cut and I'm ready to mock everything up and kinda of get my layout here. I've got this roof flashing that was like this. I cut it out and it serves as a nice template for me. 
All right. Probably gonna have to melt this water off. shingles this is the bottom so I am just gonna cut this roll lift this roll lift that roll and that's all I have to do so I will not have to lift this roll up here I'm try to find the nails so I can feel if there are any there Got lucky, we got one right here that we'll have to pull. And I'll just cut this with my snips. Just a brown aluminum flashing. This one happens to be IPS. All right, now we got some GeoCell 4500. I kind of like to run a bead along here too, so I can still get at it. I find if we in this, as we go down, it doesn't uh, uh, pull this rubber down. Now I'm going to go down, glue this, then I'll come back up and nail this off. That's that. I'm going to put on this guy before I forget. So this is kind of our sacrificial piece to fit to uh, extend the life of that original one, the one in the flashing. Put a little geocell under where my nails are going to be. Alright, so we're square with the bottom of my shingles here. And I want to be about an inch and a quarter in and an inch and a quarter up or so. I'm just going to make sure all these shingles reseal. The gobs of GSL knot lines. We don't put trap water in there. You'd normally try to get the nail heads. There those are. And you want about a half inch of space between this where it starts to go up and the edge of the shingles so you got room for the water to wick away. If your fingers are wet, it doesn't stick to your fingers as much. We got Rust-Oleum Rustic Slate will match the shingles. At least in theory that the pipe absorbs a little bit more heat and is less like less likely to freeze. So in the winter, obviously this takes a lot longer. We'll have to do probably several coats. So I'll, I'll let that kind of set up a little bit and then come back up and hit it again. I'll probably set this in the house. And then we're not doing a curtain garden. I don't have any trees above me. And we found that that's kind of a a nice magnet so we only put them on now if there's a tree above us or if the customer has like squirrel problems or something like that that's it for the roof and we're right on a busy corner so that's where all the road noise comes from all right so now i am just gonna caulk around that we've got some limestone vulcan polyurethane do not use this inside. 
takes a lot of time to off gas, and it can get you sick or your customers. kind of smooth that out and make it have contact with the rock as well so it sticks to that. I'm just kind of dabbing it, the wet finger, kind of almost like it's a putty. Now I want to just take a minute and check the plumb on this fan. Probably have to adjust it a little bit. Wondering if it looks better this way for that window. One other tech tip on this. So I don't have any fittings going back to the house like you normally would, but I see a lot of guys put this on like a street 90 or have this all the way down and then they have the fitting coming off right here. So you have no flexibility when it's time to replace the fan. It's a lot easier if you leave a little bit of room so you can slide that fan up or down and get it out. Like this is gonna be easy to replace, but I've seen some people for some reason glue everything tight and you gotta really torque up the fittings to make it work, or the fern close. So this can take a little bit of trouble in the future when it's time to replace your fan. And you can also plumb it by throwing your level on top of the electrical box on the fan tech fans anyways. All right, there we go. It's plumb. Yeah, it takes a little bit extra time, but I, I feel anyways that I won't have water pooling on one side of this. I'll finish it up, we're at 15.2 watts. So about 15 bucks a year to power this fan. So it kind of hides that nicely. It kind of blends in. So you can't see the fan on the other side of the step here. And the sidewalk, just for reference runs back kind of where my van is and then turns over to here. So all you really see is that part of pipe. One thing to mention with this is normally I would give the customer an option for heat cable to prevent freeze up and the condensate bypass. Uh, you can see that this started to freeze. We got maybe a half inch of ice right at the right at the edge here and then it started to freeze back this way as well so if we would add continued cold temp temperatures or maybe more pipe on here uh, this obviously has a greater freeze up potential so here Mike's on a budget this house is probably going to be torn down in about 10 years and it'll probably be a gas station or something here it's all full commercial so you didn't want to go too deep into it, um, so you kind of got to draw the line somewhere. All right, Mike, so your system's been up and running for a couple weeks now, and I've got the results from the eco trackers. So the entryway, we got 0 0.8. In the kitchen, we got 0 0.6. In the basement, we got 0 0.6. and the well room, we got 0 0.7. So you're below one and everything. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing anything else. You know, I don't think we'll have to uh, do phase two or add a second system or anything. That's a pretty darn good result. And we got really lucky being able to treat just that well room, get pressure field extension in the basement and not have to worry about the rest of that house over there. Why don't I give you a kind of an overview of how everything works? We'll start in the basement and then I'll show you the outside par portion. Let's do it. All right, after you. All right, Mike, so now we're down in the well room and this is where our first and only suction point ended up being. So when I cored through the slab there, there was settling, which was great. Um, so we dug a suction point and actually found uh, there was like an, a concrete drain tile of some sorts below there. So I think that's what's helping us actually reach out into the basement because there was a footing that ran through here. So I'm surprised we got pressure field extension out there with just this suction point, which is great news. So I've got our final numbers here for pressure field extension. So with all the ceiling and stuff, I ended up um, putting in a smaller radon fan than the one we had on our temporary system. So with the Fantech RN1, we ended up with 213 pascals negative in this first test hole in the well room. And then in the basement out there, in our second test hole, the one that's in the corner, we've got three pascals negative and the one that's more out in the middle of that basement. 
we got negative 5.7 pascals. So what we got, we're reaching everywhere, which is great. So now I'll explain this part. So we've got the suction point down below us here. It comes up and then goes outside where we cord through the side of the step there in that rock. And then we've got the cap here, but we're not going to have to add onto this. So just leave that cap there. Mm -hmm. Coming down from there, we've got the radon system alarm. So this alarm, you can push in on this and slide it down. And this is the battery for that alarm. It's a half double A. So it's got a low battery indicator that'll beep and that light will come on every five minutes when it's time to change that out. You can test it by pushing the test button. And all these lights have different meanings, which is written on the side of the alarm here. It's also in the owner's manual right here in the information packet. Um, going down from the alarm, we've got the system YouTube manometer. So this is just measuring the suction of the radon fan. If that fan is off or ices up or dies, the fluid levels are going to go equal like that. Mm -hmm. And that mean it's, means it's not working. So you want the fluid levels to be different. So your initial YouTube reading or static pressure is 0 0.9 inches. Now that may change a little bit um, based on if the soil dr dries out or if the system freezes up. You know, it is an outside system without any heat cable, so it is going to be susceptible to freeze up potentially when it gets really cold. If it freezes, you're going to see this YouTube um, fluid drop a little bit, indicating that there's some restriction in the pipe. And if it freezes solid, it'll be at zero. Mm -hmm. So if it changes substantially, though, just give me a call and let me know, and we can come out and troubleshoot it or get it back up and running for you. So here's my information. Here we've got your system tag. So the Department of Health may reach out to you, say, hey, we saw Jesse put a system in. You know, do you care if we come out and do an inspection? You can say yes or no to that. And then coming over to the sump, you do have uh, a new cover on there. Did use a used cover to save you some money. And then I've got an access port in there and then an alarm, a water alarm on there. So when that sump fails, you'll know it before it floods. Sounds good to me. All right. Well, we go up and out the side there. So let's go outside and take a look at it. Let's go. All right. So Jesse, tell me about this part out here. So Mike, this is where we come over the well room. I cored a hole through the rock there, and then we 90 up to the radon fan, and then we run up through the soffit and out through the roof. And it worked out pretty good here because we were able to tuck in behind this, so you don't really see it too much from the road. And then it kind of helps keep it hidden um, from that side of the house as you're walking up because the, the, big, the ugly stuff is all below the step. So it worked out pretty good for an outside system, I think. So that's a wrap for this one. If you found this video helpful, uh, please consider giving it a thumbs up. It does take a ton of time to film. So consider liking, maybe subscribing, or share it with somebody else that uh, might benefit from it. Mike, thanks for letting us film here. Thanks for coming out and putting the system in for me. Yep, you bet. Well, we'll see you next time. Are you a radon mitigation contractor that would like to be more confident when giving estimates or installing a mitigation system? Would you like to reduce callbacks and stand out from your competitors? Would you like to offer more value to the families you serve? If so, we have a hands-on radon course coming up where we are gonna focus on optimal mitigation, pressure field extension testing, suction point placement, pipe size, fan selection, and the effects of sealing. To sign up for our course, Click the link in the description below. I'm Jesse with American Radon Mitigation. Thank you so much for watching.